Hi, and welcome back to another episode of You're in Charge. I'm your host, Glenn Pash. Uh, these are conversations that spark change. Our goal is to help those of you that find yourself in charge of either your personal life, a project, a business, develop the skills through conversations to make you more successful. Today, I am so excited. I have Mindy Thomas with me. She is the host of the Reinventing with Mindy podcast. It's a really great listen. I listened to a bunch of episodes uh, this week. Just love the way you handle that conversation. Also, she is a marketing and brand strategist. And as she told me earlier, she is now a digital creator. So we're going to dive into that. So thank you very much, Mindy, for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's fun to be on the other side of things for for a change. I know it's interesting uh, when I sit in the other side. I say, oh, I don't have to worry about this. But I want I, before we I ask you the first question because I want to jump right in. I do want to thank you. So for anybody else who's out there. Um, thinking of interviewing Mindy is all you got to do is listen to the first episode of her podcast. She gives you all the history. She gives you everything. So you don't have to dive too much into research. So I appreciate that. Um, so we will unpack your journey because I'm fascinated with that. But one of the things I want to jump right in and ask you is what attracted me to your story is here we are in the middle of the pandemic and you consciously made a choice to leave your full-time career to move mm -hmm. towards more freelance or feeling more in control of what you were doing. Uh, as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll chat about your journey, mm -hmm. but I wanted to ask you, the people who are listening and can be listening to this, if they find themselves in that position, either of their own choosing, like you did, or in many cases, they were downsized mm -hmm. or they were furloughed and now they're out there trying to figure out their way. What piece of advice would you give or maybe a couple pieces of advice if you are thinking that or you find yourself in that situation how, how do you move forward I think the biggest thing for me was having a good support system around me I'm very particular about the people that I surround myself with and that's been something mm -hmm. that I have been very conscious and aware of since I was a teenager. Um, so making sure that I always have people around me that are supportive, you know, they're not afraid to tell me if they don't agree with what I'm doing or how I'm going about it, but they will always be there right. to support me, you know, no matter what decision I make, you know, this was a huge reinvention of my life, so to speak, but it was, um, mm -hmm. propelled by a pandemic that none of us saw coming. So I kind of had to make a, a dramatic shift there, but I would say number one would be making sure you very much so pick and choose who you surround yourself with so that when these wild life moments come to fruition, you've got a really great support system to lean on. And that's, that's the only reason that I was able to come at somewhat out of this. We're not totally out of it yet, but you know, with my head on my shoulders right. and starting to create something for myself and feeling a little bit more in control. That and savings. Yeah. I <laughs> Always that, have the savings. <laughs> you know, Got to have the savings so that, that, yeah. you know, I think if you, if you, you know, if you are making that decision, yes, savings and surrounding. And I think that's a really big point. I think we take the people around us for granted at times, or mm -hmm. sometimes we have people around us who we think we're going to support, you know, they're going to support us and they become the negative Nancy's negative, you know, Ned's so to speak, who are constantly yeah. uh, second guessing you. Why would you do this? Why would you leave? Because they're not seeing, they're looking at it from the outside and saying, but you have a firm structure. You know, look at that nice building of mm -hmm. a career you have, but you're saying, well, I'm inside of this building and it's not a lot of fun. Um, and I have a long mm -hmm. life ahead of me. And I get it. The pandemic was scary, but, it, you know, there's always something uh, where if you're not happy yeah. and you have to make a change. So, so what was that? Was there a defining moment for you? You know, was this a slow burn and then something happened or was this almost, uh, I woke up one day and realized I need to make a change. I would say that it was a slow burn. 
um, you know, for the past two and a half to three years leading up to the pandemic, I, uh, had my full-time salary position and then I was Mm -hmm. contracting and freelancing in addition to that as well. And I was definitely kind of burning the candle at both ends, so to speak. So that was a very slow burn. I was working a lot. I traveled a ton. Uh, At the beginning of the pandemic, I canceled eight trips within the first seven weeks of the pandemic, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I was in it, you know, I was just kind of go, go, go. You don't realize it. And then all of a sudden, everything stopped and the entire world stood still in quarantine. And I really started to kind of reflect on what I was doing with my life, how I was going about it, you know, things that I was missing with my kids. Like they really had to get used to me being home all of the time. I had to get used to being home all of the time. Um, So that was kind of an interesting dynamic and it was still okay uh, throughout the summer and everything, but you know, it, it did start to become even more of a, a hotter flame, so to speak, throughout the summer because we did at my former position furlough a lot of our staff. So I took on a lot right. more responsibility, like a lot of other people did. We went from, you know, 30 some employees to seven. At that point, and Ooh, it was that's very a, that's a big jump. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a very large jump. So it, it got to the point where it was like, how am I supposed to wear all of the hats and do all of the things? And as we got closer and closer to school starting, I have two young children, one in middle school and one in elementary school. And I'm like, I don't know how we're going to handle all of this? How am I going to handle my salaried position and still hand, carry out my contracts and homeschool my children and, and all of that? And, you know, I was very much so like in kind of the mode of, okay, we're going to make it happen and I'm going to have a set schedule and I'm going to calendar block all of the things and we're going to go boom, 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 and we're going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds ridiculous right. now, right? And I remember the second day of homeschool, sitting at the kitchen table with my son, and this was that defining moment, and I had his school iPad and my computer set up, and I was like, okay, we're going to go do this, this, and this. And I get him started on an assignment, and then I'm getting emails and texts and phone calls, and then he's asking me questions, and I thought it was going really well. I was like, we're getting it done. We're going. And next thing you know, he looks at me after my (laughs) phone pings again for like the 20th time in 20 minutes. And he just goes, I bet you wish I wasn't here, don't you? And I was like, oh, it like knocked the wind out of me and I just started crying. And I kind of went MIA for the rest of the day. Like I put my phone on do not disturb. I shut my computer. I didn't even tell everybody that I was kind of like disappearing for the day. And I just like focused on him and got his schoolwork done with him and kind of got him lunch, (coughs) settled, all of that. And then I just sat there and thought like, I can't do this. Like this isn't, this isn't feasible for me to work at this high of a level of productivity with our kids at home while we're homeschooling too. And my husband is a firefighter, so he works 24 hours. So so you're, you're, so you're home. Yeah. So you're homeschooling. So you're not zoom calling into their public schools. No, the way that our district did it, it was hybrid. So that was kind of nice. They did three days at home. So they were home Monday through Wednesday, and then they went into the building Tuesday, Thursday, But that left Monday through Wednesday all on the parents or the sitters or nannies, whatever it might be, because the teachers were busy teaching in the classroom. So they never zoomed in. It was completely on us. So it wasn't like, okay, let me get you set up here with your headphones and you listen to your teacher and they're going to tell you what to do. No, we had to sit next to him and walk him through every single step, especially him because he's in first grade. He's not, he's reading, but he's not reading for comprehension. So luckily our daughter is in sixth grade. So she was able to kind of self-navigate a lot better, but he was, you know, we had a full on tutor him. We were his teachers. Now they just started back to school. So thank goodness. But 
yeah, it was kind of crazy. So no, it, it was... listen, I have a no, I I have a I have a uh, sophomore, and I have an eighth grader, and same thing. They were at first they were uh, supposed to go back, same thing, hybrid, two days in or whatever, and then they went full Zoom. Now again, they're older than your kids, and. But even for them, getting them started, coming out for lunch, them taking breaks or just keeping their mental focus, they, my older mm-hmm. son just hates Zoom because he says, I, I don't, Yeah. he doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't enjoy it. And it's really hard, let alone younger, like your age uh, kids, they need that attention. So I could understand that, yeah. that angst of, you know, what am I doing? And, and same to you is your, your, your husband working you know, and he's doing something Mm -hmm. that is not easily, oh, I'll I'll check in later on. He's needed when he's needed. Um, (laughs) So it's, it got, that's, that's a, that's a really not an easy place to be. Yeah. So it was just in that very moment that I kind of was like, you know, I am lucky enough that I built up this contract business. So I at least have some sort of income you know, I, I sliced what I was making about in half, but you right. know, something was better than nothing. And at the same time, you know, contract work is on my time. Like I'm not, I, I do right. zoom calls and all of that, but I control my time. I control my calendar, all of that. So it became very clear in that moment that it was time to make a hard decision. And I took a couple of days, but I did call uh, my boss that Friday and, and put in my notice and that's kind of what got this whole ball rolling. So let me, let, let's expand or let me, let me pivot a little bit on that. Now you, you had a little bit of both meaning contract work where you're working mm-hmm. for, and I know you did a lot in the, I think it was in the beauty uh, mm-hmm. and, and hairstylists and things of that nature. But as you're expanding this idea of project work and now, you know, every project's a little bit different where, you know, maybe your previous full-time job was a little more, I don't want to say organized, but you know what I mean? There's a structure around that. Has it changed your view of marketing now that your, or your approach or just how you're viewing marketing where, you know, if you're getting that agency side, you can get almost into a rhythm. I don't want to say machine, that's the wrong word, but you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? There's process around it where all of a sudden now you're this industry and that industry and this level of client understanding of what you're doing. And then you have someone who's completely demanding everything uh, that you want. Ha- has it changed your or expanded or actually allowed you to go now, this is really what I should be doing? Yeah, it's actually done that. Exactly. It's definitely helped me kind of silo into not having to mm-hmm. be all of the things. And that's really what I had to do in my salaried position was I had to wear all of the hats. You know, I had to right. know the media buying. I had to know the organic side. I had to handle all the print vendors. I had to know the branding guidelines of the overall brand. I had to do all of the things. And, um, you know, if we were doing video work, I had to hire the the videographers and the producers and write the scripts and do all of the things. And, looking back on it, it was such a tall order that I put so much pressure on myself if I wasn't good in one area that now it's really nice to kind of take a step back. And I know that I'm in control of saying, okay, well, I'm just going to consult with you on your paid social strategy. And that's what we're going to do. And it's, this is the scope of work that you have contracted me for. You know, you're asking me to do something outside of it. I'm more than happy to revisit the contract, but this is what you have me for right now and it's X, Y, and Z. So it's actually done a little bit of the opposite where it's been able to kind of make things a little bit more black and white for me. And, you know, I know going into things, the expectations for myself to set so that I can set up a successful relationship, hopefully down the line. And then on the flip side too, it's also helping me recognize if it's a business that I don't really see myself fitting into if I don't think that I can handle all of the things. So, you know, I, I, it's been also helpful in me saying no to a few opportunities as well. 
Well, see, that to me is 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 exciting. And I think for people who find themselves in that of uh, taking that uh, leap of faith, so to speak, I think what was beneficial listening to your story is you had a little of both. Meaning while mm-hmm. you had the full-time secure position, you were doing some of your project-based work to figure that rhythm out. And as you said, I, I had something to fall back on. But I think that's for, for people who are in marketing, at least now, I know from my agency and the people who work on my team, it's hard to think that you can do everything. And as you said, to be able to do everything yeah. well, one person putting everything on their back versus I think the point that I hope people really take away from one of the things you take away from this is that idea of I'm controlling the contract. I'm controlling the statement of work. I'm saying, this is what I'm doing with you versus I'm going to do your marketing for you. That's really broad versus I'm going to do your paid social yeah. and underneath that, this is what that means. Or I'm going to do help you with brand strategy. And that's what this means. And then it's easier then for you as a business owner to plug in that time for your week to be able to say, well, no, I'm, I'm getting to my bandwidth with enough clients because then it's trying to fit everything in, right? I have mm-hmm. my family and have all these other duties. It, it, I think people feel at times you lose control. I actually think you gain more control. And, am I right? Do you think that yes. that's a good assumption? Yes. I feel like I've, I've gained a lot more control. I would say that's a correct assumption for sure. And a little less. And I think stress. too, I, I know that <laughs> a little, a little less stress. There are some stresses on the other side too. And, and it's like having to kind of create your own brand. And, you know, I do think that it's, it's, you know, important to have a personal brand if you are moving into a bit of a freelance space and kind mm-hmm. of be able to talk the talk and walk the walk. So that's, it's one easy way that you can showcase it, but then that kind of comes with all of the additional stress as well. And then it's kind of like, then I have to build a a site for myself and I have to figure out invoicing and I have to figure out timesheets and taxes and LLCs and all of the things. So there's some, there's some other stressors for sure on the flip side, but gaining the control of the everyday work and what I decide to work on has been the biggest you know, silver lining of this entire pandemic. That and actually being able so to let, hang out let, with my kids. <laughs> no, I, I, I tell you, I, I, same thing. Uh, it's been, who I think it's been now 13 months since we sent the agency, everybody home remote. You know, we sent everybody home. We tried to come back a little bit and it didn't work just because we brought every, we tried to figure out how to bring all the employees back safely. And we did it for about two days. And then someone said, ah, I tested positive or everybody home again. Um, and it's been interesting working at home, finding that because I, because I was the same way. I was on the road a lot, seeing clients, speaking at events and, mm-hmm. you know, having meetings. And now the boys are, oh, you're home. And uh, I like you being home. And it's, it's nice that you're home. And uh, now it's almost how much do I want to be on the road? And I think that to your point Mm -hmm. is I I want to be able to continue to have that relationship and availability while still setting the good example of going out and doing the things I like to do. Um, so, so you touched on it. Yeah. You touched on this idea of building a brand and I think people misunderstand Mm -hmm. what that means. Uh, there are certain people who don't understand what that means at all when they say you have to build a personal brand. But from a business side, when you were thinking about that and you were sitting there going, okay, I have to, you know, do my brand if I'm going to expand my business, what were some of the first questions Mm -hmm. you asked yourself or thought about when you were trying to hone in on um, how you were going to present yourself as a solution provider in, in the space? I think... We hear the buzzword authenticity all of the time. Mm-hmm. And I hate that it's kind of getting a buzzword, you know, thought process behind it because I really think in marketing, that is the best way that a brand or a human can win. So when mm-hmm. 
I was looking back at it and I would kind of, you know, look around at other people that built really great personal brands. And the biggest thing that stuck out to the ones that I enjoy following and interacting with and watching and listening to their content the most are the ones that are just unapologetically themselves, whether it's, right. you know, it, it can be anything. And I guess that's kind of really what I wanted to take in for myself was, you know, I've been way back in the day, I was a hairstylist and makeup artist and I stood behind the chair for seven years and I just got to be me and talk to my clients and do really cool things. And then I got thrown into an agency side that was very much so like, here's your dress code and here is this and make sure you say this this way. And and it was a huge shift. So feeling like those 18 months that I worked there, I wasn't able to authentically be myself was something that I really started to reflect on when I was starting to build my own personal brand. So I have to be okay with thinking, okay, at the core, I just want to be me, but I want to show what I can do while I'm being myself. And that's really where it's came from. So, you know, I, I see so often people talking about like niche down, niche down, you know, pick one thing and only tweet about that one thing or pick one thing and only talk about that one thing. But I have a hard time doing that because there's so many different areas of my life that I want to share with people that I I can't just stick to one area. But I feel like if I start talking about all of the things that I enjoy, but in a way that's adding value, then it's starting to Mm -hmm. let people know who I am while inadvertently showing them what I can do. I think that's a great point. And, and, and while you were sharing that, I was thinking to myself, it almost was if you went to school for 18 months to learn skills that now you can <laughs> mush with your personality from behind the chair. And now you're going, okay, oh, great. Now I have the skills to do what I need to do. Uh, but mm-hmm. how do I bring my own personality back into that? And that's the one thing I will tell you from listening to your podcast um, and following you on social is that all of it sounds like you, meaning I feel like I, you know, I didn't, I'm not surprised by who you are chatting with you today. If that makes sense, you know, I have a feeling that this is the way that you move through the world. Uh, We all have it. One of the best compliments. (laughs) Yeah. Well, one of the best compliments I ever received was someone saying that, you know, when they saw me speaking on stage, they met me afterwards at, uh, you know, the reception and we were talking and they said, you're exactly the person as you are on stage. And I took that as a huge compliment uh, because I just don't have the time to think, oh, I got to put on this face for this and this face for this. And maybe it's lost me mm-hmm. work, you know, for the agency. Maybe it's won me work, but I, my, I just can't play those games. And I've seen people do it. And I go, oh my God, that's exhausting Mm -hmm. where you have to constantly remember, oh, I have to put on this face now and that face now. And I really like your, your, your cadence. And I've seen a couple of your TikToks and I just laugh and that's fun. But I think (laughs) that's ultimately when someone's saying a brand is who really are you when you're at your most comfortable, Mm -hmm. right? I think that, and then are you willing to build off of that? If that makes sense. Yes. And I have to be comfortable with, you know, I might not be for everybody and I'm okay with that. So I might Mm -hmm. be a little bit too kind of out there because I do have an untraditional background and that's fine. Or I might talk a little too freely or, you know, sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble. It happens, but you know, I, I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, I know that I'm staying true to who I am and like you said, it's exhausting trying to wear too many different hats. And when I was thinking about the time at that first agency that I worked at, you know, it was, I almost had to kind of rediscover who I was. You know, I went back and Mm -hmm. I did find my happy medium and that was my previous salary position. I was back in the beauty industry, but I was doing marketing. So I got to do the best of both worlds. And, you know, it was still very glamorous. You know, we had to make sure that we did have a dress code, but it was show who you were, just make sure that you were looking the part of somebody that was working in the professional beauty industry. But you right. know, you could have your tattoos, you could have your piercings, you know, you could wear 
pleather pants and you would get a high five as opposed to a, ooh, that's probably not office appropriate. So that was really, you know, some time for me to realize who I was and that I could be all of these things and still be professional. You know, I can have hair extensions and talk about Botox on Twitter and do all of these things, but I knew right. that I was really good at my job and I could execute well and all of that. I didn't have to trade one for the other. So that's kind of where I'm at with everything now and who I want to be on any platform and anything that I do. So yeah, tw- uh, TikTok is definitely where you get to be as silly as possible. But I started to think about that even a few months ago. Like, why can't I be that silly on Twitter and Instagram and anywhere else that uh, you know I live as well? So and the more I became, you know, just me, the cooler the conversations I start to have. And really, that's what fires me up is connecting with cool people and hearing other stories and and getting a chance to to meet new people and I've met more people in this pandemic I think than I have in the past 2 years combined so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, I think I I really and and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you uh was about that because this concept of reinventing and is it really reinventing or is it getting back to who you really are? Right. Uh, right. Because we've layered on so many of those, as you said, you're working for a company and it's the company's image. It's not really your image. So you have to fall in line exactly. with them. So, you know, I, I, I think what's exciting about your journey and I hope the listeners, if they're going through this is becoming more of yourself, I think attracts more people. And to your point, you may lose Mm -hmm. some business. I think you gain more business than you lose because people want to do business with you. Um, You know, when you're working with a big company, Mm -hmm. you know, I've dealt with vendors and, and hopefully you got a good account rep and it's great but you're just as yeah. potentially uh, going to end up with a bad rep and that's where you're stuck versus I'm choosing to do business with someone. I've had people now, I've been hanging out on Clubhouse a little bit. Uh, that, that's a whole other conversation, but people- That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> oh, it, but it's interesting is I've, I've connected with more people in, in different industries and got to know them more, you know, even reconnecting with friends that you see or industry folks that you see once or twice a year at conferences. Now, all of a sudden you're talking to them multiple times, but people get a sense of who you are. And I, I can't tell you how many texts I got saying, I really like the way you think. I really want to talk to you more. It wasn't about the agency, but eventually they thought I, I have picked up work from it where people will say, well, if this is the way you think. And th- then this means this is the way you run your business. And I like that. So I, I agree. The more that people can get a yeah. sense of who you are. And, and, and I think your podcast exposes that because you, you interview well, you have good opinions, you listen well, Thank you. which, which hopefully all of us have a tendency to talk, but um, I really like it. Uh, but again, going back to the title of that, why was it reinventing, you, you know, reinventing Mindy? Is it is it changing or mm-hmm. was it just refinding you really? I mean, I get the title, but just uh, now that you're through it a little bit more, is it is it really getting back to who you really are at the beginning? I think yes and finding out also what I'm capable of. So I do think there is a whole layer of kind of getting back to who I am and what I love and what I enjoy the most, but also taking it one step further and finding that there's a whole new person and a whole new way that I can go about things to redesign, you know, the way that I'm living my life. You know, if you would have asked me a year ago, if I would have started a podcast, I would have been like, no, 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 that's not me. I work behind the scenes. I'll tell somebody else to do the podcast and give them the topics and all of that. You know, it's a whole different life now. So I am kind of discovering all of these different areas that I think I can push myself into and, and try some new things, you know, I, like I said, I started a podcast. I am doing more um, short video work for Instagram. I'm thinking about launching a YouTube channel or maybe it might be a Twitch or something along those lines. But I have this whole new world right. of things that I'm starting to dabble in and step into that 
you know, if I hadn't started on this journey of, you know, kind of reinventing what my life might look like that I never would have actually sat down and tried. So it, it's a, it's a little bit of both finding who I am, but also figuring out who I'm going to be. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I, 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 you know, I volunteer. One of the things I do as a volunteer, I help people who are in job transition, you know, people who've been let go and they've been with companies for longer than, you know, they're five, six, seven, eight, nine years and they're lost, especially coming out in the job market today. And mm-hmm. they get hung up on titles. You know, well, I was a VP and I so was this. Hung up on and they're, yeah. And they're frustrated. Uh, and, and I remember I have that for you because there was something, one of your notes, you said your job title doesn't define you. That was, you mentioned that in one of your, in your Correct. podcasts. Um, and to that, what it made me remember, and I'd like you to follow along with this for me, is what I would always say to them is forget all your job titles. Forget, you know, forget the titles even different jobs, just look back in your life. Is there a common thread through all of your jobs, things that you did or things that just happen, that there's a common thread that happens in all of them? And, you know, for me, all if I look back at all the jobs I had, I was a waiter, I worked in restaurants, I was in the kitchens, I, you know, did customer service, all the jobs. Somehow I always ended up leading a team, whether I had a title or not, you always the person that came and said, we're confused. We have a problem. Can you help us sort through? Like I could see through the chaos and go, okay, this is what we need to do and do it. And all of a sudden people said, oh yeah, well in all of my jobs, I've always been this. And I said, well, then that's what you need to lean into. So for you, when you were saying now that I'm finding new avenues, like a podcast, I'd never do a podcast, but theoretically just to think about it, if it, is that any difference than the conversations you had across the chair while you were doing someone's hair? Like if somebody just happened to stick a microphone there, is that any different than what you're doing now? So is there a common thread looking back through all of your different jobs or things that you did at the age? Is there a common thread that you go, oh yeah, I, I have been doing this my whole life? Yeah. And that's it. Like you just hit the nail on the head. And that's been a huge realization for me too, is that's such a common thread. Now I feel like people ask me a lot, do I miss doing hair and makeup and working behind the chair? And I don't actually miss the tactical part of it, like cutting, styling, coloring, makeup application, all of that. But I miss talking to people. And I miss meeting new people and hearing their stories. And I would always say, I don't really miss it, but I do miss the clients. And I've heard such cool things and met such amazing people just standing behind a chair for 10 hours a day that when Mm -hmm. I started to do the podcast and started to just have these conversations, it almost like a light bulb clicked. And I was like, this is everything that I've been missing. These are all the same questions for the most part that I would be asking somebody while I was doing their hair, because I'm just interested in learning about people and hearing what they have to say in general. And that's even by asking a lot of questions is how I got into marketing. Because if you think about it to go from standing behind a chair to working at a digital marketing agency, like how does that happen? But it was because I had a client who owned a really large agency here in Columbus, Ohio. I had another client who was kind of at the foreground of what local search engine optimization was back in, what was it like Mm -hmm. 2011, like fill out your Google plus page, like all of those little things. And I started to ask them questions and figured out how I could apply it to our salon at the time. And it ended up opening up a whole new avenue. So yeah, it's kind of been a common thread. And before that I was, you know, a server, I was a bartender, always in very social, um, outgoing areas. You know, when I was bartending, I had a ton of regulars. My Tuesday nights brought in more money (laughs) than a busy Saturday because I knew everybody that was coming in and I was great at talking to them and, and just hanging out. So yeah, that's, it's interesting because that you say that because it's definitely been common throughout my entire life. So, and even moving probably now, cause I, I picked up on it when you said, 
it's not the agency you miss, it's the clients. And what, what do we, what do you like most about the clients? It's having conversations and solving problems and figuring out yeah. well, what is your brand? Who's your audience? What are you trying to do? So it's these conversations because again, when somebody you're getting your hair cut, you know, if I'm going to even the gentleman who cuts my hair, we end up talking and we'll have a conversation and he'll say, well, I'm trying this. And I said, well, wait a minute, did you try this? And so you're constantly just like you do with friends is debate a topic, talk about a topic, learn from each other, solve a problem. And, you know, that's why I like doing that exercise because once it unlocks people, it frees people up to say, oh, I've been doing this my whole life. I'm always the person that someone comes mm -hmm. to and asks for help, or I'm always the one who, you know, there was a gentleman who was a CPA and he said, I don't do anything fancy. I said, well, just think about it. answer that question. And he finally said, oh, I'm the person that interprets the reports for everybody. They come to me and say, well, what does this really mean? And I make it so that they understand what they need to do. And I said, think about that next mm -hmm. time when you're at a job interview and say, well, I make numbers understandable for the team so they can go make money. Like, I'm going to ask you more about that versus you're a CPA. So same thing now for you. It, mm -hmm. it, it's very interesting what you say. I did what a podcast. I said, well, you stood there talking to people for all that. You've been talking to people your whole life. It's almost <laughs> second nature that someone didn't shove a microphone in front of you five, six years ago because same thing. <laughs> I bartended, I waited tables, and you're always talking to people. Um, so it's fascinating. Yep. But I think to, to what what's exciting and and this concept again for the audience is idea of reinventing. It's it's bringing all of your strengths from the past of that standing behind the bar, talking to somebody and making people feel comfortable and listening to people. That's what you're good at. Now, now I just have new avenues. Now I have to learn the skills of how do I make a mm -hmm. YouTube channel or how do I do this or how do I do this? But the core is, no, I, I like talking to people. Well, great. And we double down on that. So that's, that's really fantastic. Yep. And again, I, 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 what I love about learning more about your journey is this idea of, listening to yourself because something kicked off, you know, there was, you said there was a slow burn and finally there's a thing where my child was there. Even during that, there are people who will say, well, we'll figure it out. And they just double down on their circumstances. And that sometimes is not the best yeah. because it's just, you're just pushing down on that frustration till something explodes. And then there's collateral damage around yeah. just instead of taking the risk of saying, I have to change and just have, have faith in yourself that you have the ability, the capabilities to make it all work. So it's really inspirational. I really liked your story. I like what you're doing. I can't wait to see where Thank the podcast you. goes because, and, and just following Thanks. you, I just think you have, you, you have an, a, a good energy about yourself where you always do come across, even in this conversation, you're not talking, you, at least I have not gotten the feeling of, look at me, how great I am. <laughs> it's, here's my story. How can I help others? And it seems like that just following yeah. you on so, on Twitter, it, it always comes out with this. You can smell promoters a mile away. You can also gravitate to the you people sure can. who really care. Uh, and, and you seem to fall right into that. Or else Christina wouldn't, or, or, or Vincenzo wouldn't have said, hey, go talk to them there um so thank you talk about right. authentic those two they're great those two are great. yeah <laughs> I, you know i i, I interviewed christina I haven't gotten to vincenzo yet or or uh or uh amy uh he recommended you know amy uh, you gotta lock him down i got to i'd say all right so yeah I he really needs to recommend it. himself just as much too because he's got a cool story too i know i know he has a tendency to not so uh <laughs> but we'll work on him so anyway yeah. uh as we wrap up, got a few more minutes. So, so what I do is I moved, I got something near the end. It's called rapid fire. And so I ask you five or six oh, questions, no. random topics that have nothing to do with anything other than, and you don't win prizes, but they're fun. Uh, first thing that pops into your mind, don't overthink it, but this gives us a little more uh, insight okay. into who you are. Okay. First question is a book that inspired you. A book that inspired me, Walk Two Moons. My daughter just recently read it too. Um, and I think that was kind of 
one of those books that just really highlighted somebody that was a different path and was totally okay with just being herself and Mm -hmm. just kind of took it and ran with it. Didn't really care what others thought was just very true to herself and was just always in a mindset of introspection and Mm -hmm. and comfortable with her path. So I would say walk two minutes. Great. All right. Next question. A movie that you stop and watch whenever you run across it on TV. Sweet Home Alabama. Ah! (laughs) All right. Uh, A food that you loved as a kid that you would not think to eat now. Peanut butter and pickle sandwiches. Oh! (laughs) See? See, I told you. These are ones where people are going, really? That? Okay. A hobby or skill... A hobby or skill that people don't know you have? A hobby or a skill that, I don't know. I tell everybody about everything. What do people don't know well, that I have? Well, I mean, I saw you MacGyvering something the other day. So so give me a skill that you're good at that people wouldn't assume you're good at then. I can walk on my hands for a really long time. See? There you go. That wasn't in your profile. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, which comic book character are you? Lady Sif. Okay. She's from Thor. All right. I'm also a huge nerd. (laughs) That's all right. Listen, if you can't see, I have my, I have tons of comic books. My wife always goes, really? I married you? You have all these comic books? I love comic book (laughs) art. And my kid, Maria, you know, that whole resurgence is, is good. Okay. Uh, we have one more of the rapid fire, and then I have one other question for you. So it's not depressing, but it's all over. It's all done. People are celebrating your life. They're raising a glass, a toast to you. What are some of the words they're going to, or what are the, some of the things they're going to say about you? <laughs> Hopefully that I was a damn good time. Um and I was fun to be around and I was reliable and supportive Mm -hmm. and yeah, I would say reliable is probably the biggest one. Always there to show up for friends and family, I think is my one thing that I strive to be all the time. I like that. Reliable is good. All right. So Thinking back about our conversation today, as we wrap up, last question, thinking about this whole thing, we've talked about a lot of things, reinventing, talked about your journey, choices, and commentary. What's the one thing that stood out in our conversation that you would want or hope that the listeners would take away? The reflection piece. Looking Mm. back, you walking me through that entire exercise of, you know, what are all of the things that you've done up to this point that have been consistent throughout your career path? I think, you know, it's something that like I've started to materialize myself in my head, but the way you put it just really kind of streamlined it for me. So that's a huge takeaway for me, for me from this conversation as well. Right. Yeah. And for me, I think one of the, uh, I think this idea of not so much, it's embracing who you were to, to become the person you want to be, you know, it's mm-hmm. not reinventing, but it's arming yourself with all the skills and then looking forward to say, now, what can I do with all this stuff and be energized about the future, not fearful of the future. So I really think you're a great person to follow for that because, um, you know, we see it happening right now and, and you're taking those steps and that that's phenomenal. So, um, so Mindy, thank you so thank much you. for being here. How can people follow? I know where to find you, but where can people find you, uh, on social media? How can they yeah. connect with you? Yeah, you can, uh, find my blog and my podcast is listed at Mindy Thomas.com and the podcast is, you can listen to it on any platform, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of that fun stuff. And then on Instagram and Twitter, both I am Mindy S. Thomas, TikTok as well. So yeah, that's kind of me across the board. Fantastic. And I highly recommend to all of you who are listening uh, to to follow Mindy, 
listen to the podcast. Great information. It's su been such a pleasure connecting with you and meeting with you. There's been a lot of fun. Uh, I look forward to continuing the journey and following you as I tell everybody, if there's anything I can do for anybody uh, and yourself included, let me know. Uh, if you've made it this far, again, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you uh, share it out. There's a lot of people who uh, could use this information. That's the goal of this podcast to help everybody. So make sure you share it. Uh, as I end every episode, uh, you're in charge, but now Mindy's given you a few more tools to help you become more successful. So again, thank you so much for your attention. I appreciate it. Happy listening. And Mindy, enjoy yourself. Thank you so much for having me, Glenn. This was great.